Back at you here at KMJ. Locally, panhandling. God, that's always a biggie. I swear that is always a big one. Yesterday's newspaper, the front B at the front B, the Fresno B, there was a big front page article about this. Finally, we've got individuals in the know saying what I've been saying, saying what you've been saying for a long time, that there's a big difference between people who are genuinely homeless and those that are panhandling, that are begging for money. And there's a new video called Save Shaw Avenue, which focuses on the homeless problem. Now, the video features an interview with Pastor Rob Cravey, who's the chief operating officer of the Fresno Rescue Mission. H. Spees, a lot of people know H, who works with, uh, you know, the, the mayor, Lee Brand, and a convenience store owner, also a Fresno man who kicked his addiction and was left homeless by way of the uh, the rescue mission. Um, this whole theory of when you see somebody panhandling, you give them money, you're doing the right thing, that's completely bogus. That you're, you're actually contributing to their problem. You're killing them. You're giving them more dope, more booze, more drugs, whatever. So this video was uploaded near the end of June. It's been viewed thousands of times, and it's been shared all over the Facebook groups. And again, uh, well, I, I'm just going to roll it, let you listen to it, and then uh, we're going to talk about it, all right? Some audio from it. Let's do that now. What our constituents need to hear is, uh, and our citizens need to hear, is that every time you hand out a dollar, you're killing someone. Right. If we could visually see where that money is going, whether it tugs our heartstrings or not to see someone left outside, if you could see them being raped in the middle of the night, if you could see Sandra, the little old lady sitting on the corner of Marks and Shaw every day um, and people coming up checking to see if she's alive every day. Right. If you could see that and you know that that's what your money's going towards then you wouldn't want that for yourself. You wouldn't want that for your family or your kids. Why would we leave people outside? Why would we intentionally hurt them? We still have about 1,700 people on our streets. And what most people don't know is that most panhandlers are not homeless. They may be holding a sign that says they're homeless, But if you talk to law enforcement, if you talk to any one of our police officers, especially those that are on the homeless task force, what they will tell you is that most panhandlers are not homeless. 85 to 90% of the people that are encountered on the street by our police homeless task force, our police department's homeless task force, just simply move on. Women's and Children's Center, every other Friday, we fill a van full of uh, women who are in program with staff, and then we drive from uh, River Park all the way down the Blackstone Corridor, and every female that we see outside, we stop and offer a bottle of water and a chance to pray over them, uh, and then offer them services. Uh, Out of all those trips, two ladies have come back to us uh, at RTC. And out of the hundreds, hundreds of people that I've talked to, Never once has anyone gotten in a truck. Uh, all their money's tax-free. They can run around and change the world. Why would he want life change? This is a happy alcoholic doing exactly what he thinks he needs to be doing, and he's been in addic- his addiction for decades. The moment that the cash flow stops, People will have to either seek help or start stealing. And either way, they're going to get the help that they need. Beautiful. This, again, is a video which you can find online. It's called Save Shaw Avenue. And though I have not heard the whole thing, seen the whole thing, the lesson imparted here about the differences between a panhandler and somebody homeless I think is very, very valuable. Every time you hand out a dollar, you're killing somebody. You're contributing to their habit. There is a big, big difference between a panhandler and somebody who is genuinely homeless. And that's what this video is suggesting. And that's something that's got to stop. And as the the individual was saying at the end of the little clip that we had there, and it runs much longer than what uh, we gave you. We just gave you a little little snippet of what this is all about is that when the revenue dries up these people are are they're going to move on 
they're going to reach out for help, or they're going to start stealing. But either way, they're going to have to reach out for help because it's going to be the end of the road for them without their source of income. And I so totally agree because we've done our own investigating. I've done my own investigating myself. KMJ's done it. You know, a lot of these panhandlers hold up signs that say they're homeless. They aren't. They have homes. They have places to stay. So that's the first tug at the heartstrings. They're homeless. They're not. They're not. And when you give them money, you're contributing to their Jones. You know, whatever it is that they are into. They're dope. They're booze, and it's got to stop. So we've talked about this so many times on this program. What do we do? There are communities that have posted signs about giving to to panhandlers, and there are finally some communities, and apparently there must have been a legal test, who are now imposing fines, citations, on those who give to panhandlers. And that's been my suggestion all along. You think you're doing something right in your heart of hearts when you hand that buck through the window to the panhandler. And it's kind of tough making you the bad guy, making you the lawbreaker. But that's the way it has to be. And if that's the way it has to be in our own community, then let's do it. And the sooner, the better. It causes traffic problems. It causes a number of different problems when these people are on the corners you know, having traffic stop, and you think, oh, I've got to, I've got to reach into my, my wallet, my purse, my pocket here, and find some spare change for this individual. Do you know what, what potential you are unlocking for a severe traffic accident in doing that, while at the same time contributing to this person's lifestyle, which is 100% negative? That's the difference between a panhandler and somebody who is homeless. So is it time, I ask you for probably the 20th time on this program, to start legally cracking down on those who give to the panhandlers? Sorry, but making them the bad guys. Can we talk about that? 490-5858? Or wherever you're at, 800-776-5858? Can we look at it in that direction? Ray Appleton is on the warpath. My name is Maximus Decimus Meridius. Father to a murdered son, husband to a murdered wife, and I will have my vengeance. Ray Appleton. Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? On News Talk 580-1059, KMJ. This issue puts me on the warpath in my hometown. You heard an excerpt from a video called Save Shaw Avenue pointing out the differences between somebody who's genuinely homeless and somebody who's a panhandler. Handler. Spit it out. A panhandler just wants to rip you off to forego their addiction. Just, you know, not forego it, but to keep it going. Whether it's, whether it's you know, dope, whether it's, it's booze or whatever. So is it time to go after the individuals who are giving that money to a panhandler? Uh, we've talked about this so many times. Richard, you're first on this one. Go for it. Hi. Yeah, years ago I managed a concrete uh, plant, and on a Saturday we had the sheriff's department up here in Oakhurst want a stage where we were because an 18-year-old kid, homeless kid, OD'd on horse tranks. Asking the sheriff's department, I asked how many homeless are usually up here, and they said anywhere from 180 to 200 people at a time. And the thing of it is, is I, on my own curiosity, there was a kid panhandling, and I asked him, a buddy of mine was looking for somebody to help him out, and I told him, I said, you contact this number, get a hold of him, and he'll give you a job. You give him straight eights, and he'll give you a good wage. Weeks down the line, I asked my buddy if the kid ever showed up. He said, no. I seen the kid still panhandling for money. I asked him, I said, hey, did you wanna, didn't you want a job? I tried to turn you on to this job, and he goes, no. He goes, I figure I can make more panhandling than I can working. So the problem is, is, Another one, this girl from the church come looking for a homeless encampment because she was giving them, wanting to give them food and blankets. And I told her, I said, don't, don't enable them or else you'll never get them back on their feet. You got it. You got to just let them hit the bottom of the barrel to pull themselves out. Well, you've clearly illustrated, especially with the first, uh, the first story as to why we've got to stop this. And maybe we have to start going after the people that are actually supporting their habit. 
thinking in their heart of hearts that they're doing the right thing when actually they're not, Richard. And I think you you figured that out. And you probably knew in your heart of hearts that kid wasn't going to show up for that, that good job. Eric, you're on KMJ. Hi. Yeah, how are you? Pretty good. Yeah, I just wanted to say um, I kind of disagree with uh, uh, the uh, the local authorities getting involved, um, penalizing the people that are giving money to the homeless. That shouldn't happen at all because they're actually taking rights away from the individual that wants to help somebody, even though they don't know that trying to help them by giving them money, you know, the homeless, giving homeless money, yeah. Um, I, you know, they're, it's an individual right to give somebody money if you want to give them money. Mm-hmm. And the government should not get involved with that. But if it causes a problem, for example, giving money on a crowded street where there's traffic involved and that causes a traffic accident, innocent people get injured and this has happened. Um, what, what kind of a problem, what kind of a right are we dealing with then? The problem is, is if somebody gets in a car accident, it's their fault for not paying attention to driving. <laughs> right? No. No, not if the individual who's causing the accident is the individual that's panhandling, where it's clearly clearly posted, for example, you can't panhandle. I mean, we can go round and round on this, Eric, and I, I, I know I'm not going to be able to convince you. With all of the social programs that are out there, these individuals, if they wanted to help themselves, they'd be able to in a heartbeat. But they are addicted to a a lifestyle where they know they can get it on the cheap without having to go through a cure or actually work, and they will. And in the interim, it contributes to a societal problem that is we've defined a thousand times on this program, and and you know what it is. And it also cheapens the city, too. You know, forgetting about rights and privileges, I don't even want to get into that argument. It makes the city look bad. And I understand a lot of people don't like that one. Oh, how dare you say that about those people? Well, I'm saying it. I'm saying it. It causes problems in more ways than one. Darren, hi there. Hey, Ray. Thanks for taking my call. Sure. Uh, Would it be really funny if we found a statistic that the majority of people who give out money are liberal-leaning and they are taken away from the social programs that they have created themselves? (laughs) <laughs> uh, you're probably not too far off the mark I, I'm probably not but first I have a couple comments uh, first is you know my heart swells when I hear that uh, Miss Mays from the Fresno Bee is actually following along with her journalistic integrity that's an awesome thing coming from the Bee um, I know that story is not directly from her but she's helping it a little bit um, you know we've always said this for years now in the city don't enable these people stop it but we can't tell people how to spend their money um, that's fine but can we not forget about the story of the young man who was found almost half dead on Sean 41 with hundreds of dollars in his pocket? Mm-hmm. How is that not enabling? Mm-hmm. How is that not a detriment to not only our own society, but that person's own well-being and those family members who have that son, you know, he might've had children who knows, you know, you, it's just creating more detriment on our own society by giving, you know, we're always going to choke on our own bleeding hearts. I've always said that forever. And, that's just my comment. Thanks, Ray. Good show. We're always going to choke on our own bleeding hearts. Boy, I'm going to steal that one from you. That's a good one. Every time you hand out a dollar, you're killing somebody. I mean, that in itself right there is enough reason to refrain from doing that because there's enough stats and documentation out there to document that for the Eric's of the world. Terry, you're next. Hi. Hi, Ray. I wish there was a law because of... A couple weeks ago, I was in the Home Depot parking lot, and this lady had a little girl out there, and they were all sweaty and tired. And my heart, I I don't usually give to panhandlers. I just don't. But my heart went out to this little girl. She was just mud from the sweat and the dirt and everything. And I thought, this is actually child abuse that she lets this baby sit out here, you know. But she said she's not homeless. She just needed uh, food, and she needed gas money. So I gave it to her, and I swear to you, Ray, I didn't go down to the end of the parking lot, and here's another lady with a little kid out there, and all sweaty. I I thought, boy, have I ever been taken advantage of. This Mm -hmm. is crazy. I will never do it again. I don't care how poor or how bad off they look. That's it. That uh, was the straw that broke the camel's back for you, huh? 
It was. It was to find two gals in the same parking lot doing the same thing, swearing to me that, you know, they just needed gas to get home. Her mom had her four-month-old baby at home, and she had to get there to help her. And then here we go. And, and I asked her, I says, are you with that other lady? She says, no. And, and they had an accent. It, I, it sounded a little bit Russian to me, but um, I'm not real sure. But I, I thought, you know, I... I've listened to your show enough, and I've decided no more. I'm not giving any more, but that, it's the kids that got me, those little kids sitting there in the heat. And uh, I, I just couldn't, couldn't hack it. I gave her money for gas and went and got her some food and uh, fed them. And I thought, well, good, now they'll be off the street. And then I run into that other lady, and I thought, oh, am I a big sucker or what? You made the determination that you were being worked. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure I was. Yeah. And, you know, if there was a law, I would not have broke the law. I would not have. I would have just, you know, I would have obeyed the law and not done anything. I would have felt really bad, but my conscience wouldn't have bothered me as bad knowing that the law says not to give to them. So I have to obey the law. Amen. That's my story. I just, you know, if there was a law, I would have obeyed it. But since there was not, and I, I don't do that typically, um, you know, I... I just, I'm a big sucker. That's all there is to it. Terry, i got to roll on. Thank you. Liberal old Medford, Oregon, has a law. And they post signs. The signs read, transfer of items between vehicles and pedestrians is prohibited. And then it gives the Medford code, 6.3606A, blah, 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 blah. So it can be done. It is done. You know, these are in traffic situations. And that's what I'm alluding to. You know, I mean, there are those encounters in the parking lots. And what can you do there? I'm not sure. But in terms of using traffic codes to stop this, this passing of money to for real panhandlers, uh, it can be done. And that's the point I was trying to make with, with Eric. And Medford, Oregon has done it. And there are other communities that have done it, too. We've been through uh, a lot of them on this program. Pat, hi. Yeah. Hello. Hi there. Hi there. Hi. I wanted to make a comment. Yeah, do it. Uh, you were uh, talking about how it would be a good idea to find people giving money to panhandlers. Uh, yes. I have a problem with that for a couple of reasons. One is I'm a fan of fewer regulations, smaller government. That's not going to do it. Uh, and, and the other thing is, you know, there are people who give money to panhandlers, and they may be unaware of what's going on. Um, but some of these people, you know, their their religions tell them it's, you know, to help people in need. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the effect that it has in a traffic situation on other innocent people around them. We're not talking about... You know, their religion, uh, we're not talking about the individual circumstances of the of the person who's doing the panhandling. It's not the issue here at hand. We're looking at situations where traffic uh, could indeed be a big problem and accidents could happen because of what happens on the streets and the street corners. Oh, I agree. But I don't think finding the people who are trying to give the money out is the answer. Um, there's got to be another way. And which is what? What is the other way? Well, you know, I, I don't have a good answer for that. Um, one thing that I've thought of a lot of times is, you know, we know that these people have drug or alcohol problems, most of them. And, you know, we and nowadays, you know, they go to jail, they get out the next day. They don't even stay in. So I don't know. Could you send them to rehab for 30 days? And if you do that enough times, maybe no. it'll catch with some of them. Oh, yeah. No. I mean, I don't even want to answer that question because they're not going to go. And they're going to get lost in the system because a lot of them don't have addresses that they're going to surrender. You know, they're not going to go. You know, you've got to stop the flow of money to these individuals. You've got to cut the cash, period. And when you do that, like the individual was saying on that tape, um, they're either going to move on, they're going to seek help, or they're going to start stealing. And when they start stealing, they're going to get caught. We continue for a bit longer on the Appleton program at News Talk 580. 
105.9 KMJ, Chris Daniel, 205 today. Michael Jemanuel Jr. not going to be with us with his daily take on the news. Taking a couple of days off this week, and that's just fine. Let me correct one little thing I said earlier. I said this article about this video called Save Shaw Avenue was in yesterday's paper. It's in today's paper, front page article. Getting back to you on the KMJ talk lines. And by the way, we've got some lines available to you now. 490-5858, 800-776-5858. Got real crowded there. Gene, it's all yours. Hi. Hello. I I'm, uh, was several years ago, I was in a parking lot and I was putting my purchases in the back of my car and a big four-wheel drive pickup had come alongside and parked there while I was in making my purchases. And when I got to my car, the fellow stepped out of the driver's side and wanted some money to put into his car because he had his wife and his baby there and they had come to the store to get diapers and stuff and could I please give him some gas money. I'm driving a little tiny Kia Rio I'm on a fixed income, a low fixed income. I don't even come up to poverty level, but I eat and I have shelter. And this guy's driving a great big four-wheel drive right up next to my little bitty car, and he's wanting gas money. What are you doing taking your kid out in the heat? Don't you have anyone that can take you around or take your wife around for you to purchase that you have to beg money in a parking lot? I've never been in a position where I've had to beg, but I've had people help me. But I always work for what I get. I hope I do anyway. But I told him no. I I don't have it to give. Mm -hmm. But if I had a baby, I would call somebody, hunt somebody, and find someone to help me out rather than drive my gas hog down and park it in a lot and ask a grandma for me. So I don't have a problem saying no. <laughs> so that's how I feel about it. Yeah. And I can the, say no. And I, the more people I, that I, say I, no, the more of these people will go away or seek help on their own. Yeah. There's there's too many helpful organizations now exactly. to, to add, make money from old ladies out in the parking lot. <laughs> no, I totally yeah, agree. I'm, yeah. I totally agree. Gene, i got to move on, but thank you for that story. Um Mark. Boy, we've had a lot of callers named Mark today. Go right ahead. Hi. Oh, he's gone. Bye-bye. Let's see. Anthony, you're next. All right. Uh, First-time caller. Yes, sir. Um, I was sitting down at uh, a local restaurant right there in Fresno. I'm from Lemoore. Mm-hmm. I go over there, and me and my, my significant other sitting there having some dinner at a fast food joint. And this group of uh, African Americans come up, and only one of them approached me and asked me for for money. And I looked at him and I said, "No." I said, "I work hard for my money. I'm not giving you none." And I looked back. I turn around. I look at the group and I shake my head, "No." And they all look kind of disappointed. And I told the guy, "I said, look, I work hard for my money. It ain't gonna happen." And then he starts begging for it. I turned around, I ignored him, I continued eating, he eventually walked away, and they sat there for me to, like, come out. Now, if I were to get jumped because I told them no, and there's not a law against it, and I really hurt one of these guys, wouldn't I be the one behind bars? Probably. That's, I'm, there needs to be a law against it, in my opinion. Well, I I totally agree. That's what we're, we're trying to sort that out. Did he explain why he wanted the money? No, no reason at all. Just I mean, give me money. Out. Yeah, just give me some money. I need money. And I'm like, well, don't we all? No, <laughs> I, mean, I mean, they were well dressed. They weren't even. They were just panhandling because they could. They were doing it because they could. Yeah, well, that that needs to stop, Anthony. Thank you. And and there's somehow some way we have to get creative, like Medford, Oregon did, and come up with laws that prohibit people from giving money to these people who are panhandling. Now, we're running very, very tight on time. All right, so I don't have a lot of time. Elaine, go ahead. Hi. Hi. About 12 years ago, I'll get right to the point. 12 years ago, I used to give to a panhandler on Sean Clovis Avenue. 
And one day I left work early, and I saw this gentleman in the parking lot putting on dirty, grubby clothes, getting his clothes out of the trunk of a brand spanking new car. Yeah. Still had the uh, paper license plates on it, and that cured me. We have heard that story often. <laughs> Not exactly about that individual per se, but others. There was one out on Jensen Avenue. I forget, Jensen and Cedar or someplace like that. It was even followed home by law enforcement, and uh, we got this from the law enforcement officer who called the program. Had a beautiful home. Uh, he was actually dropped off by his wife every day to Panhandle and made about sixty and $70,000 a year. Stuff makes you crazy.